Christian eschatology is a major branch of study within Christian theology. Eschatology, from two Greek words meaning last and study, is the study of end things, whether the end of an individual life, the end of the age, the end of the world and the nature of the kingdom of God. Broadly speaking, Christian eschatology is the study of the destiny of humankind as it is described in the Bible, which is the primary source for all Christian eschatology studies. The major issues and events in Christian eschatology are death and the afterlife, heaven and hell, the second coming of Jesus, the resurrection of the dead, the rapture, the tribulation, millennialism, the end of the world, the last judgment and the new heaven and new earth of the world to come. Eschatological passages are found in many places in the Bible, both in the Old and the New Testaments. There are also many extra-biblical examples of eschatological prophecy, as well as church traditions. History Eschatology is an ancient branch of study in Christian theology, informed by biblical texts such as the Olivet Discourse, the Sheep and the Goats and other discourses of end times by Jesus, with the doctrine of the second coming discussed by Paul of Tarsus and Ignatius of Antioch, then given more consideration by the Christian apologist, Justin Martyr. Treatment of eschatology continued in the West in the teachings of Tertullian, and was given fuller reflection and speculation soon after by Oregon. The word was used first by the Lutheran theologian Abraham Calavius but only came into general usage in the 19th century. Approaches to prophetic interpretation The following approaches arose from the study of Christianity's most central eschatological document, the Book of Revelation. But the principles embodied in them can be applied to all prophecy in the Bible. They are by no means mutually exclusive and are often combined to form a more complete and coherent interpretation of prophetic passages. Most interpretations fit into one, or a combination of these approaches. Preterism Preterism is an approach which sees prophecy as chiefly being fulfilled in the past, especially during the first century. Prophecies in general, therefore, have already been fulfilled. In particular, many preterists view the book of Revelation as a text employing symbols in its communication of prophecy to the early church regarding the actors and events involved during the destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70 AD. Other preterists consider the book of Revelation to be a symbolic prophetic presentation of the struggle of Christianity to survive the persecutions of the Roman Empire. There are two major views within preterism, that of partial preterism and full preterism. Preterist beliefs usually have a close association with amillennialism, the belief that the millennial reign of Christ began during the establishment of the early church. Preterists usually consider events such as the Great Tribulation as having occurred during the siege and destruction of Jerusalem from 66 to 70. Early preterist theologians included Eusebius and John Chrysostom. Historicism Historicism is an approach which sees prophecy as being fulfilled in the past, present and future, including during the previous two millennia. In particular, many historists view the book of Revelation as a text employing symbols in its communication of prophecy to the elect church regarding the actors and events involved during the Great Controversy. Specifically, historists consider the book of Revelation to be a symbolic prophetic presentation of the struggle of Protestantism to survive the continuing persecutions of the papacy. Historists usually consider events such as the Great Tribulation as having occurred during the period of absolute papal supremacy from 538-1798. The subject of the revelation to John the Apostle was large and complex mostly covering the things which should happen thereafter. The vision covers the combined secular and ecclesiastical history of Christendom describing the grand political changes of the Roman world along with the ecclesiastical purity or corruptions of doctrine and general apostasy of the church and its persecutions of the saints which are the true people of God, according to E.B. Eliot. 
The first six seals of the Book of Revelation outline the temporary prosperity of the Empire of Heathen Rome followed by its decline and fall which covers the time period AD 96 to 396. The first seal, as revealed to John by the angel, was to signify what was to happen soon after John seeing the visions in Patmos and that the second, third and fourth seals in like manner were to have commencing dates each in chronological sequence following the preceding seal. Futurism and futurism parallels may be drawn with historical events. But most eschatological prophecies are chiefly referring to events which have not yet been fulfilled, but will take place at the end of the age and the end of the world. Most prophecies will be fulfilled during a global time of chaos known as the Great Tribulation and afterwards. Futurist beliefs usually have a close association with premillennialism and dispensationalism. Futurist beliefs were presented in the Left Behind series. Idealism in idealism, also known as spiritual or non-literal approach. The Book of Revelation and other eschatological materials are interpreted symbolically. Different authors may interpret the judgments and resurrections on a more existential level, argue that the beast and Babylon represent a variety of social injustices as authoritative, did not believe in an afterlife or any resurrection of the dead. The Pharisees, who not only accepted the Torah, but additional scriptures as well, believed in the resurrection of the dead, and it is known to have been a major point of contention between the two groups. The Pharisees based their belief on passages such as Daniel chapter 12 verse 2, which says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. The intermediate states and traditions teach that the soul sleeps after death, and will not awake again until the resurrection of the dead, while others believe the spirit goes to an intermediate place where it will live consciously until the resurrection of the dead. By soul, Seventh-day Adventist theologians mean the physical person, and that no component of human nature survives death. Therefore each human will be recreated at resurrection. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, Each man receives his eternal retribution in his immortal soul at the very moment of his death, in a particular judgment that refers his life to Christ, either entrance into the blessedness of heaven through a purification or immediately or immediate and everlasting damnation. Purgatory Some denominations affirm the statement from the Catechism of the Catholic Church with the exception of the parenthetical phrase, through a purification or immediately. This alludes to the Catholic belief in a spiritual state, known as purgatory, in which those souls who are not condemned to hell, but are also not completely pure as required for entry into heaven go through a final process of purification before their full acceptance into heaven. Eastern Orthodoxy and Protestantism do not believe in purgatory as such, though the Orthodox Church is willing to allow for a period of continued sanctification after death. Most Protestants reject the doctrine of purgatory on the basis that Christ has already made full atonement for our sins on the cross thereby removing all obstacles which prevent us from coming directly into the presence of God after death, resurrection of the dead. The doctrine of the resurrection predates Christianity. The word resurrection comes from the Latin resurrectus, which is the past participle of resurgere, meaning to rise again. Although the doctrine of the resurrection comes to the forefront in the New Testament, it predates the Christian era. There is an apparent reference to the resurrection in the book of Job, where Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he will stand at the latter day upon the earth, and though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I will see God. Job chapter 19 verses 25 to 27. Again, the prophet Daniel writes, Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Dan 12 to 2, Isaiah says, Your dead will live, together with my dead body, they will arise, awake and sing, you who dwell in dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth will cast out the dead.
ISO 26 to 19. This belief was still common among the Jews in New Testament times, as exemplified by the passage which relates the raising of Lazarus from the dead. When Jesus told Lazarus' her sister, Martha, that Lazarus would rise again, she replied, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day, JN 11:24. Also, one of the two main branches of the Jewish religious establishment, the Pharisees, believed in and taught the future resurrection of the body. CF Acts chapter 23 verses 1 to 8. Two resurrections and interpretation of the New Testament is the understanding that there will be two resurrections. Revelation says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and will reign with him a thousand years. Rev 20-6 The rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Rev 20-5 Despite this, there are various interpretations. According to the premillennial post-tribulational position there were two physical resurrections separated by a literal thousand years. According to premillennial pre-tribulationists there will be three physical resurrections more. They claim that the first resurrection includes the resurrection in the rapture and the resurrection in the second coming. The second resurrection would be after the 1,000-year reign. According to premillennial mid-tribulationists there will be three physical resurrections too. The first resurrection would be the resurrection in the rapture and the resurrection in the second coming. The second resurrection would be after the 1,000-year reign. According to our millennial position there will be only two resurrections. The first resurrection would be in a spiritual sense. According to Paul and John as participation right now, in the resurrection of Christ, through faith in baptism, according to Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 and Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 as occurring within the millennium interpreted as an indefinite period between the foundation of the church and the second coming of Christ. The second resurrection would be the general resurrection that would occur at the time of Jesus' return. The resurrection body the gospel authors wrote that our resurrection bodies will be different from those we have now. Jesus said, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels of God in heaven. Mount 22:30. Paul adds, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body, is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body, 1 Co. 1542-44. Other views according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church The body after resurrection is changed into a spiritual, imperishable body. 999. Christ is raised with his own body. See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. 553. But he did not return to an earthly life. So, in him, all of them will rise again with their own bodies which they now bear, but Christ will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, into a spiritual body, 554. Although Martin Luther personally believed and taught resurrection of the dead in combination with soul sleep, this is not a mainstream teaching of Lutheranism and most Lutherans traditionally believe in resurrection of the body in combination with the immortal soul. Early 20th century American preacher Billy Sunday epitomizes the evangelical focus on going to heaven. In his sermon, Heaven, a wonderful place where there is no more death, blessed hope of the Christian, in the message Sunday characteristically explained the feelings of his audience by saying, Everybody wants to go to heaven. We are all curious. We want to know where heaven is, how it looks, who are there, what they wear, and how to get there. Sunday speaks of many aspects of the outer life such as the nice weather and eternal health. Although there is no mention of the resurrection of the dead, he ends with an illustration about a man who dies and goes to heaven exclaiming, Home, home at last, as if he had arrived at the end of his eschatological journey. Several churches, such as the Anabaptists and Socinians of the Reformation, then Seventh-day Adventist Church, Christadelphians, Jehovah's Witnesses, 
and theologians of different traditions reject the idea of the immortality of a non-physical soul as a vestige of Neoplatonism, and other pagan traditions. In this school of thought, the dead remain dead until her physical resurrection of some or all of the dead occurs at the end of time. Some groups, Christadelphians in particular, consider that it is not a universal resurrection, and that at this time of resurrection that the last judgment will take place. Rapture. In his letter to the church at Thessalonica, Paul writes, The Lord himself will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first, but he adds that, We who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 1 th. 416-17 The rising of those who are still alive to join the resurrected dead is known as the rapture. Some believe this passage implies that Paul believed that the return of Jesus, the resurrection, and the rapture would happen simultaneously. In Futurist eschatology, rapture is used in at least two senses. In the sense of pre-tribulation views in which a group of people will be left behind, and as a synonym for the resurrection generally.